the theory behind Fibonacci's, just so we can explain this first, here's a fib, right? So the concept of Fibonacci's follows the concept of Dow theory. Dow theory states that in order for a market to move, there must be retracements in order to have healthy price moves. So it moves up, it comes down, it moves up, it comes down, it moves up, so on and so forth. Now, based that what Dow Jones, the guy that the indices is named after, what he noticed or what was you know theorized was that the market tend to have the same sort of market movement overall, right? And this was that the 0.5 and 618 area was a healthy trend. The 382 was a strong trend and an 86 or 786 was a weak trend. This indicated both trend strength, also where the pullback was expected to go and where it was supposed to extend to. Now a Fibonacci's retracement or a Fib move must have both a initial move, a retracement, and then a final extension at the one level, right? That's going to be the start of your move. The end of your move will be at the zero. And the reason for this is because we're looking at the percentage of the original move that we're getting the retracement of. So if you were to get all the way back down to the entry, that would be a 100% retracement. You've traveled back 100% of the move up. That typically means you either have a reversal happening or you're in consolidation. That's what that will indicate. Now, your retracement will typically indicate how far the extension will go. Not always, but this is sort of a rule of thumb. If we have an initial move that pulls back to a 382 level, we're typically going to see that extend either to the 1618 or above, right? So typically this indicates a very strong trend and you're typically going to see price take off. If you have price move back down to the 61 or the 50 area, this will typically mean you'll get an extension of about 100% back up to the 618 as well, or the 1.168. So if you get a move down here, you're typically gonna move back up to the 618. And then also, if you get a retrace down to the 786 or the 86, which is a weak trend, you'll typically only see a push back up to the 27 before you see a retrace again. And then finally, as we indicated before, if you see a retrace below that, you will typically see consolidation or a reversal. So depending on where the retrace happens, we can sort of understand where the extension will go. Does that make sense? So based off this information, we know that we have to have an A, B, C, D. So the start of your move will always be your A, always. The end of the move, which is going to be at your zero line, this will be the B of the move. So you typically always will have an A, B leg, which is the initial move. And then following that, you will get what's called the C uh, retracement. So A, B, C. And we can start deleting these. because They're just going to get in the way. So we have our A, B leg, which is your, your initial move, your C retracement. And then finally, that equates to your D extension, A, B, C, D, right? And the way fibs work is once you've reached the D extension, and had a pullback, your next fib retracement will be the AB will become your CD leg. So what ends up happening is your A becomes your C, your B becomes your D, or your C becomes your A and your D becomes your, your B, right? Because from this move, you're gonna have a pullback and an extension. So from here, your new pullback will be your C pullback, C retracement, and your D extension. And this will continue because you'll have a new fib here, right? This fib will come here, pull this one back, right? So you have a new fib that then gets hit. And then again, same thing happens from here. This will be our new fib and become an AB, boom, 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 so on and so forth. This applies to any chart, whether it's the one hour, the four hour, the daily, the weekly, the monthly, the five minute, the one minute, does not matter. Now, obviously the higher the time frame, the more, the less noise you're gonna get, right? All right, so our initial move here, this is the bearish, you know, bearish fib. That's the initial move here. As we can see, price retraced to the 5.0 before finishing its extension. And we can also see that all of these, none of them had a significant retracement. This only came back to a 3.2. Here's our final extension before we get a solid retrace. This comes back up to a 
So a pullback can be at 382 because that would indicate a strong trend. Now this does have a little bit of subjectivity to it because you have to determine, depending on what time frame you are, where what noise is and what noise isn't. For me, for example, some people will take this move and, and call this a retracement. Personally, I wouldn't because you never completed the de-extension of the original fib, right? So here's the original. This is the first move where you hit the 618. You get a pull back to the 50. That becomes our new fib and our full extension is all the way down here. But this is still a significant enough retracement that a 2.7 extension is good enough, in my opinion. And then here we have the same thing. We have a retrace to the 5.0 and extension all the way down to the 2.7. Here's your fib all the way down. Boom. And then this is where the fib fails. So you had nice wave movement all the way down. Now, if you'd done this a little bit tighter, you could have and said this was the move with the retracement and potentially done another move. There's that's OK. This is probably a move on a four hour, but not for the daily, in my opinion. So the final fib you have is here all the way down, which then breaks the 100 level, which now indicates that you're in an uptrend. So from here, once we know that we're in an uptrend, we can start our fibs again from the bottom. So from the bottom here, we're going to start our first fib. That's here. That's the first move up. Here's the retracement. Retracement comes down to the 786. And our extension comes around 27 again. So new fib is here. And again, we have a retracement down to the 786, an extension that ends up all the way at the 618. But my guess is we're not going to see a complete retrace until we get much higher. It's fine. This is this rat. This just, you know, ran away. But there was no retrace until up here. But this is where you had your first pullback. And that's what we're looking at right now on the daily. So on the daily, this was just a huge rally with no pullbacks. Now, if we go and drop this down to a lower time frame, we'll probably see more. But that's essentially how you get your bullish, your bearish, and then your bullish fibs. Based off of each pullback, you make a new extension, a new AB, a new CD, etc. Now you can do this. We can take this down to the one minute time frame. It works all the same. You're just going to get more noise. Here we go. So on the one minute, we're getting the same thing here. Here's our initial move down to here. And we get a retrace to a 618 and a full extension. So the next fib is going to be from here to here. Here we get 786, 86 retracement. So here's our next fib. Yeah, I'd say this is our first pullback. And you can see that this doesn't actually get filled until over here. So you got a bunch of little things. And then here's where your final push happens at the 618, the 50618. So there's your next fib, which comes down to here. Your next fib on the one minute is going to be this on your D extension. And this ends up getting broken. So you can then go back and start adding your bullish fibs, which then turns into consolidation and continues the downtrend. So then you can start again, so on and so forth, right? It works on the one minute, but you're going to notice like this fib is going to fail. And then your up fib, which you're going to get around here somewhere, I don't know where, right? Eventually is not going to extend and it will fail as well. And then here, your down fib is because you're in an overall downtrend. This is the down fib that's going to start working again, where that's your new fib, retrace extension, so on and so forth. But Fibonacci's don't just uh, Fibonacci is not like this is how the market goes that if you have a retracement you have an extension all it does is it explains that the market tends to move in waves and a healthy trending market will retrace to a 618 so you know that in a healthy trending market this is what you're going to see but if you enter into consolidation fibs are useless completely useless they will never work because they're that's not what they're designed for they're designed for a trending market because that's they explain how the market moves while it's trending. That's it. It doesn't do anything else. Fibs are a great tool, but fibs are not like if you get a retracement to the 618, it has to go to the extension. Uh, you can get a fib uh, like this, for example. Let's just uh, for the sake of argument, I'm going to do this, right? Let's just say that this was the first move. All right, we're going to go like this, right? You can very much get a fib where you get the first extension. It pulls back. It enters into consolidation before the final extension happens, right? And this is not wrong, right? It's still an original pullback. And if you go up to the, the daily time frame, all that noise makes a lot more sense because it's within a four hour, one hour, whatever it might be. Like, here you go, right? So now it makes a lot more sense on the one hour that this is the pullback and then the push. 
but on the on the one minute it looks like an absolute mess right so things to understand about fibs understand that it's a general rule of thumb it's not what will happen it's just how it's understood to happen so it's a good thing to keep in mind as you're watching the markets 